Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to dive into a topic that is incredibly important to anyone who is looking to advance their career in project management and that is the PMP certification from PMI. The PMP or project management professional is a globally recognized credential in project management and can open a lot of doors for you when it comes to your career advancement. So let's break down everything we need to know about getting certified. Are you ready? Let's go. So what exactly is the PMP? The PMP or the project management professional is a certification that is offered by PMI, which is a project management institute. It's one of the most respected and globally recognized certifications in project management today. Having a PMP certification means that you have the education, the experience, and competency to lead and direct projects. It's like having a gold star on your resume that tells employers that you are serious about project management. So how do you become PMP certified? Well, first you need to qualify and meet PMI's strict criteria for becoming a project management professional. And these are called the eligibility requirements. So for the eligibility requirements pertaining to education, there are two common paths that you can take. If you have a bachelor's degree from a accredited university, you need three years or 36 months uh, of experience leading projects, which amounts to about 4,500 hours. So I think they look at one year equals 1,500 hours. So that's 4,500 hours for three years worth of experience. Plus you need 35 hours training uh, or education, which is the course that we offer. So if you attend any of the PMI approved courses, they, are tip they will typically give you 35 contact hours of learning. And that certificate is needed as part of the application along with a bachelor's degree and along with 36 months or three years worth of project leading experience, which again is 4,500 hours. Now, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, that's okay. You can go with an associate's degree or a high school diploma, and you will need with that five years of experience, which I would equate to about 7,500 hours of experience. Um, and that five years, they actually look for 60 months in the five years. They need to see that you've worked on projects, you've led projects, for 60 months amounting to at least 7,500 hours. Plus you need the 35 contact hours of training, which again is the training that we offer. Now for the training, the 35 hours, you can attend the classroom training, online training, self-paced uh, training, or most people don't know this, but you can actually do self-study, but that is a bit harder to qualify. Uh, PMI can question those. Your best resource for the uh, 35 hours of, uh, of PMP education would be through a PMI authorized training partner because their courses will be pre-approved just like ours. Uh, now, if you don't want to attend the uh, 35 hours worth of training, um, it is possible if you are already CAPM certified, which is Certified Associate in Project Management. If you are not CAPM certified, then you do need the 35 hours of training. So those are the education requirements. So why do they have these requirements? Well, they need to make sure that you have a solid foundation and knowledge of project management before you take the exam. They need to filter out those who have at least learned the theories and can prove that they have worked in project management before they have you sit for the exam. It's not just a matter of passing an exam. Otherwise, we're just going to have a lot of paper PMPs, which is not what PMI is looking for. Now, once you meet these eligibility requirements, the next step that you want to do towards getting your PMP is to go on PMI.org and create a free account. It costs nothing to create an account, and you have to put information about yourself, name, email, company that you work for, your address and so on. Uh, and that creates your profile. They give you a username and a login, which you will need for you to be able to apply for the PMP exam. Mm -hmm. 
once you create your profile, now you need to go and find uh, on their website, click through the certification, find the PMP certification, and you will see a button that says apply here or some, something to that effect. Then you click that and it was, it's going to go through a lot of fields to qualify your project experience. Now remember, if you have a bachelor's degree, that was one of the scenarios, then you need to demonstrate that you have three years and 3,600 hours of leading projects. So that, that is what's going to be entered into the application form. You would need to list several projects that you've worked on, the dates, you have to remember the dates, when you started on the project, when you finished, who was the point of contact that can confirm and vouch for you that you actually led that project. It's a bit complex for a lot of people to recall projects from the past, but do your best. Uh, to try to remember where you worked and what you did as a project manager. Name the project, list some details about the project. When you describe the project for each of these projects that you worked on, um, my recommendation would be to have it done in basically two parts. The first part, which is like one sentence, describes the product of your project. So what is it that you worked on on that project? Were you upgrading an IT system from an old version to a new version? And why were you doing that? Was it to accommodate more users due to growth in the company? That is the product of your project. Then you need to spend some time explaining in a few sentences what you did leading the project. And this has to sound like project management terminologies. So things like I led the project from beginning to end, including creating the project charter, identifying stakeholders, collecting their requirements, finalizing scope. Uh, you need to describe what you did as a project manager and that you can get from the course that you would attend. So if you speak project management terminology, that's what PMI is looking for. They need to know that you have led projects using their methods that they cover in the course or in their, uh, in their project management body of knowledge, the PIM books. Um, incidentally, the PIM books 6 and 7 and the Agile Practice Guide would be your best references. I do have other videos that you can watch on what you need to study to be able to pass the exam, but mainly Pinbook 6, Pinbook 7, and the Agile Practice Guide would be sufficient, or you attend the 35-hour training from authorized training partners. So you describe your project for each, the title and the project, what you did as a project manager, product of the project, details of what you did as a project manager. You don't need to go crazy on this, just describe in, I don't know, you can be generic sometimes, but you can give more details about you did, what you did as a project manager. It has to be about you, not third party, not generic newspaper clipping. No, it has to be like, I did this, then I led the team doing this, then I went on and did that, I prepared that. So it has to be in your voice, okay? That's how you describe it. And they tell you how many characters, you can take a look at how many characters. But typically, uh, one sentence describing a product and maybe a few sentences describing what you did as PM. So you describe several of your projects, and, and this will be done on their form on PMI.org. You describe several of your projects, and there's a dashboard that's gonna be showing. And once, you quali once you've completed 36 months, PMI will automatically block off any additional entries. It will tell you that you've met the minimum requirement. Now you have to enter your details for the course that you took. And if you took it with you know, us, then we would have given you a certificate and it would have an ID that would have the approved number of hours. So you'd have to enter the training center that you attended with, which dates you entered, and those would be automatically approved, right? And then you also need to list the university uh, so basically you're filling in all of the qualification criteria that we talked about previously. You enter that into the form and then you, <clears throat> once all is completed, you need to submit that. Now mind you, the project details, I mentioned that before, but just so you don't forget, you need to have the points of contact for these projects because they could audit you uh, one out of 20 applications after you submit the application, one out of 20, which is 5%, will be audited and when you audit it it's really not a big deal so don't panic it's, it's you know don't 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 worry about having documentation and so on basically what they'll do is they'll print a couple of your projects 
uh, without you know the other information about about them they will have you download those and have the have the points of contact sign them and then you'll need to mail it to PMI and that will delay your process of getting certified two to four weeks essentially until they review the documentation that you sent them and tell you that your audit is complete then they'll you know con they'll let you know now once you get the confirmation that the audit is complete the next step would be for you to pay for the exam for the PMP exam and schedule it with regards to the fees PMI just increased their fees and they are currently $675 if you are not a PMI member if you are a PMI member it is $425 now you may be wondering you know how do I become a member and what does that really mean does that mean I'm PMP certified if I'm a member no to be a member you have to pay an annual membership fee and last I had checked it was $139 the first year and then it goes to $129 for renewals you will you know my recommendation for the first time that you're taking the exam just for the chance that you may not do well the first time around on the exam and you want to redo the exam I would say take the membership I mean a hundred and thirty nine dollars let's say around 140 take that take it out of the 675 um, that is 500 something and you're only going to pay 425 with the membership so you're already saving money uh, by having the membership so take the membership the first time around if you don't do well the retake of the exam is also cheaper you can retake one time second time so if you can take two more times after the first attempt and that would make three attempts if you if you fail all three attempts which you really shouldn't uh, unless you were just risking it and not really preparing for the exam um, then if you fail all three attempts which you can schedule immediately after you fail one you can schedule the other one it's not going to be the same questions by the way the, the questions will change uh, if you do fail all three then you have to wait a whole year before you can attempt the exam again all right very well so you've submitted your application and they let's say they've accepted your application now when they do accept your application it's typically really fast i think within a day or two or even less could be automatic i don't know so once your application is accepted you pay you schedule your exam now this is not one of those exams where you only have like one or two you know opportunities the whole year you may have one or two opportunities per month to take the exam and you can take it at home in the office in your bathroom if you want you can take it online uh, now mind you even when you take it online it doesn't mean you have room to cheat because they'll have you open the camera and the microphone and they'll have you go around with the laptop you know the whole room to see up down and they're going to be listening and watching so if you try to cheat in any way try to talk um, they're going to just kill your exam and you would have failed it. So I wouldn't plan on cheating. Now, I already explained how you prepare for the exam. You can attend a class, PMP uh, authorized class that would be 35 hours. A lot of institutes like ours will do it in four days. Some will do it in five days. Um, it is doable in four days. They're just longer days. Uh, but it is to the point it, it's using material created from PMI uh, and so it covers all that you need it covers the exam content outline uh, and that's all you really need to sit for the exam if you want to verify what you're doing let's say you're self-studying and you want to verify what you're studying you can go to PMI.org go to the PMP and on their website look around on the PMP page and you will find the exam content outline which you can download explains all of the topics that you need to be familiar with and ready to answer questions on uh, your best choice really is to attend a PMI authorized training partner course that will be the 100% guarantee that you have all the information that you need plus you'll be provided with those course materials and also with some few sample questions now with us um, and with for you right now you have the option of uh, practicing with mock exams so we do offer 
um, with the course that we sell, we would offer the mock exams for free, five full mock exams. If you're not attending a course with us, but you're relying on these videos instead, then I would say you can buy those mock exams. So you can go on Udemy, I'll put the link down in the description so that you can have quick access to it. And I'm sure there's other providers who have their own mock exam. So you shop around and see which one is best for you. Mine has gotten some good feedback and I'm sure there's others out there that would have good feedback. That's really up to you to shop around for the mock exams. But as part of preparation, if you attended the course, then you need to review the material uh, and make sure you're comfortable with all the terminologies, keywords, and so on, and then practice with the mock exams. If you're self-studying through these videos, which might be sufficient for most people, my videos are enough along with the updates that I'm publishing. It should be more than enough and then you can practice with the mock exams. If you also don't wanna watch videos, which I don't know why, uh, but let's say you don't wanna watch videos, then read PIM book six, read PIM book seven, read the Agile Practice Guide. This is all from PMI. Um, but that's a lot of reading, so I'd say watching videos is a lot easier. Uh, my 45 video series was, ba was, the, was the PMP exam prep course that I used to give that people would sit through so that they can go take and pass the exam. So I don't see why you wouldn't do that. Typically, when people attend my course, the, the most common question that I get is, how long should I study for? And I find that to be like a strange question. It's very common, but it's kind of strange because we all learn differently. We study differently. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses, but uh, so I can't, you know, it's really hard to specify how long it should take you. I mean, what if I read all of the content in four days and passed the exam, which is what I did way back in 2004. Now, for most people, I would say six to eight weeks is a decent amount of time. And the, uh, the study plan that I would recommend is that you, well, if you're watching videos, honestly, just watch them all. Uh, be serious about it. Give it an hour and a half a day, but not every day because you have a life. An hour and a half times three days a week. And I think that should give you six to eight weeks. People who attend my course, I ask them to review the material, just reread it, right? And reread about an hour and a half, three times a week. That's four and a half hours of learning. And then, you know, you'll probably go for like six to eight weeks and you should be fine. Do not practice with questions until you've completed the whole review. So if you're reviewing the whole course from a course you attended, only practice with the questions once you are done. If you are watching videos, only after you've watched all of the videos and you feel confident that you've learned enough, that's when you practice with questions. You do not want to practice when you're not ready because that will decrease your motivation. That would make you lose your confidence in yourself. So do not try the questions until you have covered all of your learning. Now, when you do try the questions, you can do them in, uh, you know, you can do a whole exam at a time. Although personally, I wouldn't have a patience for uh, that long of an exam. You know, it's 180 questions. So I may do a small bit at a time, 30 questions at a time. And then, um, you know, judging on by how I scored and where I found that I didn't really know the answers and I wasn't sure about the topic, then I go learn these things again. So I review them so I can strengthen my knowledge in them. And I'll do another 30 questions and keep doing this and re-verify my knowledge. Just practice with 30, find your weaknesses, strengthen those, fill that gap. Go look up the information, Google it. Chat GPT will work, Copilot works. All of these tools are available to you or the videos. Just go rewatch that part of the video to confirm the information. Then test yourself with additional 30 questions and keep doing it. So one mock exam that is 180 questions is like six little exams for you. Why not? Why suffer through 180 and forget where your weakness is? Well, I wouldn't do that myself, but that's really up to you, right? The more you practice and review, it's not about just taking questions and answers and, you know, scoring yourself. That is not where you're going to get the value. It's by you 
practicing questions and answers, and then re-strengthening yourself with additional information, filling the gap for knowledge that you don't really have solid in your head. Just you need to strengthen yourself because on the exam, oh, let's talk about the exam. So the exam is made up of 180 questions. And when you do this online, which is what most people are doing, you take it in three sets of 60 questions. The trick for you to successfully complete and pass this exam is that you need to have a solid and thorough knowledge in all the keywords and the topics so that nothing feels like it's strange or out of this world. All right, so 60 questions at a time, 70 minutes. You complete that, they give you a 10 minute break, you cannot redo those 60 questions. You do the other 60 questions and so on. Another 10 minute break, another 60 questions. Now, once you submit the final 60 questions, which will submit on its own once the 70 minutes are complete, once you submit or the 70 minutes are done for the third set, you will automatically know if you pass the exam. Something will pop up on the screen. If it starts to be sympathetic to you, saying that most people would, you know, you know, you failed. All right. If it starts to give you a sorry story, a sob story, you already failed. It should say congratulations, you know, you have passed. It will be very clear that you passed. Any other story, uh, as you read on, you're going to find out that you have failed. Now, failing isn't the end of the world, but passing feels so much better. So I would say prepare really well. Don't rush this uh, unless you have to for work reasons or for something that you applied for, a job but I would not really rush this. Give it time, give it six to eight weeks, but be serious when you're studying. Now, you're probably wondering the type of the questions, what are they? Well, most of them are going to be multiple choice with one question, four answers, and you would have to select the correct answer. Sometimes there's two correct answers and so on. There's also a few mix and match uh, where they'll ask you to match certain keywords with descriptions or what is this compared to, you know, you, you have to do some linkages between some words and some others. So you really need to know in depth uh, the meaning of some of these things. Also, there's some hotspot questions. Uh, that's not the internet. Uh, hotspot where you'd have to click on a chart or something to indicate uh, based on the question a certain point in the trend or whatever. So I can imagine, you know, earn value type questions, uh, burn down charts and so on. Those are places where they could ask you hotspot type questions. Um, what else do what they are? So multiple choice, mix and match, um, hotspot. Uh, you, you will never need to type freely. Okay. Oh, there's fill in the blanks, fill in the blanks. So they have fill in the blanks questions, but you don't have to type freely. They do give you uh, the options that you'll choose from to fill in the blank. So you never really have to type freely. So don't worry about that. It's not an essay uh, and you don't lose points for wrong answers. You just don't get the points, right? Uh, so, you know, because a lot of people will, you know, not choose the answer because they're afraid that a bad, a wrong answer will deduct points. It does not deduct any point. It's either you're going to get it right or you're not going to get a score on it. All right. So for me personally, I'm not going to leave any question unanswered. I'm going to look at it. If I figure it out, fine. I'm going to choose the correct answer to the best of my knowledge. If I can't figure it out, then I probably I'm going to eliminate. Uh, I mean, the people have different strategies, but I would eliminate what is really obviously wrong or sounds very unprofessional or tacky. Um, you know, those things are sometimes very obvious to you. Do not put something outrageous that you cannot deduce from the question. Uh, you know, things that would say like, well, because the sponsor probably has uh, two homes down on the Cape. I mean, they didn't say that in the question. Don't select those answers that sound weird. Uh, and also the answers aren't based on your own experience. They don't care about your experience. Uh, your experience is important for the application, but the content in the pin book guide and such is what they need you to answer on, all right? So do not base it on your own experience, base it on what you've studied, base it on what the videos were telling you, all right? 
That is what they want you to answer with. Right. Now, if you can't figure out the answer, again, eliminate the clearly, obviously wrong answers out. Maybe one or two are wrong. Then the remaining two, whatever looks cosmetically correct to you, go with that. Mark it, right? Now, that's not the end of the world. Let's say it's B, you mark it. Um, you have the option to mark it uh, and not just select it finally, like you select it. You select B, for example, and there's a something you can check that says mark for review and this allows you at the end of the exam if you have extra time to go and review all the questions that you have marked for review and you can go back through them either agree with whatever you said before or fix it because a lot of times i think you probably know this some questions give you a clue about some other questions so you may have uncovered a few things so you wait until you finish your whole exam go to the ones that you've marked for review go through them fix your answers before the time runs out. Um, if you don't have time and you know time runs out on you, then whatever you have marked is going to be taken by them as your final answer. Now, you have 25% chance of being correct. You know, if there's four answers, you have a 25% chance. That's much better than 0% by not answering, right? I'm sure you agree with that one. Now let's talk about the exam content. If you go online to PMI.org and you go to PNP certification, like click on their links and then go to the page for the PNP, you can review the exam content outline and you will see all the topics that are being covered. Now the exam since 2021 has become 50% based on traditional project management and 50% based on agile project management. So for people who don't have that kind of background in Agile, they may find this challenging, but don't worry, you can learn. Uh, it only took you 13 weeks in university for each semester and you went in not knowing a certain topic and at the end you knew it. And all you met was twice a week or three times a week. If it was twice, you met an hour and a half. If it was three times, you met about an hour each time and so that amounts to about three hours every week that you learned in university times 13 weeks about 39 hours now your learning which is typically uh, if you attended a course with us or an authorized training partner the pmp course is about 35 hours so it's enough for you to learn for you to learn all the topics that you need so don't worry too much pmi is not looking for you to be an agile guru you know there's a lot of things you're not gonna know that's okay but what you do want to know is the content that is in the PIM book, in the Agile Practice Guide. The content that is covered in the training, if you attend any of my trainings or an authorized training partner course, or the stuff that I'm covering in the videos, like all the updates that I've added to the previous course, uh, to the previous PIM book 6 type course. Now, with regards to the, the breakdown of the exam, it's going to be covering three performance domains for project managers. And those three performance domains are the people, process, and the business environment. So the business side of things, that's like 8% of the exam. It's called business acumen. So you really just need the basics when it comes to mission, vision, you know, strategic reasons why organizations would initiate a project. You also need to know the relationship between project programs, portfolios, and organizational strategy. Um, so all the linkages in there, uh, which I cover nicely already in my videos, that's the 8%. And then you have 50% based on the process, which now they call ways of working. The 50%, I am pretty sure, is mostly covered in my 45 original set of videos for the PMP. It's based mainly on Pinbook 6. There's a few additions when it comes to Agile. Uh, because in Agile, they don't really work with requirements. They work with user stories. They work with release, uh, you know, features, epics, and they use sprints. So there's quite a few terminologies that you need to learn. Those you need to fill the gap that you have in those areas. And that you can find from the videos that I'm publishing. Um, and so 50% is based on the ways of working and you have the remaining 42% based on what they consider the people skills or the power skills. What's in the power skills? Well, you know, managing your stakeholders, managing your team. So it's the people side of things, conflict management, motivation, team building, all the things pertaining to how you work and interact with people. 
again, watching my videos is probably more than enough. For, for those things and even if you don't have the updates let's say you're watching immediately after I publish this there's probably enough information for you to pass the exam but I wouldn't rush it I mean I'll fill myself in on knowledge pertaining to agile um, if I've not published those all right so you can find them elsewhere or if I've already published by the time you watch this then they're ready that's all you really need to watch okay so that's those are the three performance domains the business acumen which is eight percent ways of working which is the process which is mainly pin book six with some agile added to it and that's like 50 percent and then you have 42 percent going to the people side or the power skills so the final piece of my video here is about the the day of the exam so what do you do the day before what do you do on the day of the exam a lot of people will choose to practice mindfulness, relaxation the day, the day before. Why? You don't want to go anxious into the exam. You want to be calm, you, don't wanna, you want to be focused, uh, and you want your brain to function. So you need to have slept well, you know, treat yourself really nice the day before. Get your studying done all before the final day before the exam. Try to keep that one day for your brain to rest. If you're one of those who can't do that, that's okay. Then if you've made notes or you have things that you want to review last minute or you just want to scroll through, um, I don't know if there's videos that would be summarizing the whole PMP. I see some around, but I'm not really sure you can actually review for the full PMP the day before unless you're going to sit there, you know, maybe you slept well. This is the day before the exam. You wake up have a nice breakfast and then start watching these videos skip through areas uh, that you already know if I think if you're a YouTube premium member then you're not gonna get the ads so that will be a little bit faster for you if you're not a premium member I think uh, just take the premium membership on a trial basis for one month um, and just use it for the sake of the exam all right uh, just so you can review without any ads just go scroll through, skip through areas that you already know, uh, reaffirm knowledge in areas that you don't know the day before the exam. Don't practice questions, I think, on the day before the exam because you're going to panic if you don't know the answer. You'll be like, oh my God, I'm going to the exam and I'm not even ready. Don't practice questions the day before the exam. That should have been done way before. All right, so that's that before the day of the exam. Now, personally, I've not taken the online exam. You know, I took this back in 2004. And I'm not taking PMI's online exam, so I'm not really familiar with what they do on the day of the exam. But I do know that you have to turn the mic on, the, micro, the mic and the camera, and then, you know, turn your laptop around. They want to make sure you're not going to be cheating, uh, up, down, and so on. I don't know if they're going to ask you to show an ID or something, but if anyone knows who's taking this, please feel free to put that in the comments so that people would know. I don't really know what they ask you for IDs on that day. Um, but uh, on that day, you should be ready to answer questions. Your mind should be sharp. I would say the only thing I can advise you on is your mindset. When I take exams, I tell myself positive things the, before that. I, ref I refuse to shoot myself down. I don't talk myself down. I don't see why anybody should. Don't tell yourself you're not going to do well. Instead, even if you feel you're lying, all right, just lie to yourself. Just say, I'm going to do well. But I think better than that, tell yourself something more encouraging, like, I know my project management really well. I studied really well. I covered all of the topics. I should be able to remember most of the topics when asked for in the exam, in the questions. My mind is going to work as an AI machine. It's, going, it's storing all of the information. It has stored all of the information that I studied. And when I see a question, my mind is going to be like a computer. It's going to scan through the question, through the answers, and it's going to send that to the back of my brain, and my brain is going to submit the correct information to the front of my head, and then I'm going to pick the correct answer. My brain is going to work really fast like an AI machine. My brain is an AI machine. My brain can uh, recover information from the back of my head. You have to tell yourself these things. Say it when nobody is around you. Don't worry about it. Just say it. 
it makes a difference. I've tried it, I've tested it, I've asked people to try it, it actually works. Just do that, right? Assuming you actually studied, right? And it's not like I didn't study, but I'm gonna lie to myself. No, you've studied, you've, you've done the best that you can, you have no regrets, whatever happens, happens. Again, if you do well on your exam, if you pass, they're gonna tell you immediately at the end of the third set of 60 questions, they'll tell you that you have passed. You would know immediately. And now you can call yourself a PNP certified professional. That's it, you are now PNP certified. One of the tricks that you can use in order for you to perform better on the exam is to imagine your feeling when you have already certified. How are you going to feel? What would be your level of joy, your pride in yourself? Think about it. Think about that when you're studying as well because that would keep you motivated all through. Don't think about this is a long studying plan. I'm never going to finish this. This is going to kill me. No, if you think that way, you're probably going to do bad, right? Think about the end result. Think about the feeling you want to have when you certify. Think about all that you can do. Uh, but know very well that you are human and, you know, that sometimes things don't go well. But you are going to be focused. You're going to be relaxed. Your brain's going to function really well. And you're not going to have any emotions as you answer those questions. Please do not have emotions. Shut up your emotions during the exam. It's an exam. You need to do well. Every question is just over a minute. You need to focus and be relaxed and be unemotional about it. Like a machine, you seriously need to be a machine and you will be able to do fine on that exam. You'll do your best on it, okay? Now, once you're certified, you're gonna come back and let us know that you're certified so we can celebrate, I don't know, pop some balloons online and so on. Mm -hmm.